how to build a raised deck. A raised deck is a great addition to any garden, especially if the ground is sloping or uneven. A partly or fully raised deck is the perfect solution for those difficult to use outdoor spaces. You'll find a full list of tools and materials you'll need at the end of this video. When choosing where to build your deck, keep in mind factors such as shade and privacy. If you decide to use a permanently shady spot, be prepared to clean and treat the wood once a year to preserve the timber from damp and prevent algae growth. Avoid very wet areas completely. It's best to plan your deck to scale on paper. Try to be as accurate as possible with your measurements, bearing in mind the size of deck boards you plan to use. This will help limit cutting and wasting boards or bearers. When planning a raised deck, you should also bear in mind that any deck higher than 300mm off the ground will require planning permission. When building the deck, be sure to use structural treated timber and remember to treat all holes and cut ends of wood with two coats of preservative. To start, measure and mark out the deck area using pegs and string line. Then, measure diagonally across from post to post. If both the measurements are the same, then you know it's square. Or you could use a set square to do this. You can then remove the turf and all vegetation from inside the area to a minimum depth of 50 millimetres. Once the area has been dug, place a post into position in the corner of your frame and measure and mark out 100 millimetres from each face. Remove this soil to a depth of 700 millimetres, being sure to look out for any cables or pipes as you go. Once the soil has been removed, you should be left with a 300 by 300 millimetre square. This is where you'll be adding the post crete. Repeat this for the other three corners. Next. Split a concrete block in two, using a brick bolster. Then, place a section of block into each of the holes, making sure they're firmly in place. Take a length of post that is slightly longer than you need, as you can cut it down later, and place it into the hole. Use small pieces of timber to create props that will hold the post in place until you're ready to postcrete, and secure them to the joists with screws. It's important that you keep checking the posts are level as you go. Repeat this for all four corners. Now it's time to pour postcrete or a concrete mix into the holes to make sure they're permanently fixed in place. Ensure the posts remain truly vertical. You also want to create a gentle slope away from the timber posts on all four sides to help rainwater runoff and so prolong the life of the wood. Leave the postcrete for around 20 minutes and then check it set. Then remove the props. Create a string line around the four corner posts to help you to mark and place the guides for the remaining posts. To do this, measure from post to post to find out where the centre point is. Then measure and mark out your midpoint before hammering a post marker into place. Bear in mind that posts shouldn't be further apart than 1500 millimetres. Repeat this until the five post markers are in place. As you did with the corner post, dig out the holes to a depth of 700 millimetres and a width of 300 millimetres and place the concrete block into position. It's now time to prepare the outer frame. If you're on a slope, then always measure from the corner where the deck will be at its highest off the ground. Mark on the post where the highest part of the frame will be. Cut the outer frame joists to length. Next, line up a piece of frame with your mark and temporarily secure it in place with a 64mm deck screw. To ensure rainwater runs off your deck and away from the house, you need to allow for a slight fall in the level of the deck frame. You should factor in a 2mm fall for every metre. Bear in mind this fall when checking the levels throughout the build. Put your spirit level on top of the frame and lift until it's at the required level, and when it is, secure it to the other corner post. Line the next piece of frame up with the corner of the one you've secured and repeat this process for all four sides. Then, double check that each side is level. Mark on the frame where the midpoint of the post is and use a set square to draw a straight line downwards. Draw guide marks 40mm from the top and 40mm from the bottom of the frame. Next, 
Use a 40 mm flat wood drill bit to make countersunk holes around each of the marks before using an 8 mm wood drill bit to drill pilot holes. Hang a washer on the end of a 100 mm coach screw, insert it into the hole and hand tighten before securing it firmly in place with a 13 mm socket. Repeat this on each of the other corners. Next, mark on the frame where the center of your support posts will be positioned and repeat the process of marking and drilling the countersunk holes. Put the post into position onto the concrete block, making sure it's level before clamping it into place. You can now drill your pilot holes before securing the frame to the post with a washer and 100mm coach screw as before. Simply repeat this for all the posts on your outer frame. You can now add your centre post and support joists. Bear in mind when measuring that these joists should run in the same direction as your deck boards. Firstly, measure from the inside of the frame on one side to the inside of the frame at the opposite side and then cut a length of joist accordingly. Attach the joist to the post at each end and secure as you did the outer frame. Put the centre post into position, clamp in place and secure as you did the other posts. Make sure the post is level before continuing. Repeat this so the centre post is sandwiched between two sections of the support frame. Once this is done, secure all the new posts with postcrete. To trim the posts, rest the set square on top of the outer frame and mark a line on the wood of the exposed faces and then saw. Repeat this process for all of the posts on your decking. Remember to treat the cut ends as you go. Next, measure the distance between the central support joist and the outer frame and cut sections of joist to length. Roll out your landscape fabric and cut it to size making sure it's as snug to the post as possible. It's best to overlap the fabric to ensure it covers all of the area that will be underneath the deck. Pour gravel onto the landscaping fabric to help hold it in place and further prevent weed growth. Smooth the gravel as you go. It's now time to mark out the placing of your internal joists. To do this, you should measure 400 millimeters from the center of the outer frame and mark a line using a set square. This line is the centre of where the first joist will be positioned. Repeat this at 400mm intervals down the length of the frame and add an extra joist if your final gap exceeds 400mm. Then, extend your line downwards onto the side of the frame and mark pilot holes 40mm from the top and 40mm from the bottom before drilling using a 2mm drill bit. Secure the joist in your workbench and attach a joist hanger to each end using 30mm exterior screws. To secure the joist to the frame, place it into position with the centre of the joist lining up with the 400mm spacer mark. Be sure the joist is flush with the exterior frame and use an extra pair of hands or packers to keep it in place if needs be. Drill 2mm pilot holes then secure using 100mm external grade screws and the supplied socket bit. When fixing the joist to an unexposed side of the frame, drill a skewed pilot hole on either side before securing skewed screws into position. Once the joist is in place, secure the final 30mm screws to the joist hangers. Repeat this for the rest of the joists, making sure the top of the joist is flush with the frame before securing. Now it's time to measure out and prepare your noggins bearing in mind that the distance between them should never exceed 1200 millimetres. It's also easier to stagger your noggins so that you don't have to skew screws to attach them. Mark out where you want your noggins to be and measure the distance between your joists. Then cut the noggins to size. Put a noggin into position and draw a line that marks the centre of the noggin on each joist. Measure and mark 40 millimetres from the top and bottom on each side. Drill your pilot holes before securing the noggin with 100mm external screws. Then repeat this process until all the noggins are in position. Now that the frame of your decking is secure, it's time to build the steps. We're going to use pre-made step risers to do this. Start by deciding where you want the steps to be positioned. Bear in mind that they shouldn't be spaced more than 450mm apart. 
hold each step in position and mark their edges onto the wood. Measure the distance between the marks and the next step and cut sections of joist to the required lengths. Then, measure and mark out three evenly spaced sets of pilot holes. Clamp the sections into place, drill the pilot holes and secure with two 100mm screws at each end. Your steps should be supported on solid and level ground. Next, put your first step into position, making sure that it's flush to both the top and the side of the frame. Mark two evenly spaced pilot holes and then drill through the side of the step and into the joist. Secure the step in place with countersunk 100mm screws. Repeat this process for any other exposed sides of the steps. To secure unexposed sides, drill a skewed pilot hole on each side before skewing the 100mm screws into position. Drill a final screw through the support frame and into the back of each step, being careful to avoid the other screws that are already in place. Now, take an off-cut of deck board and hold it next to the step to mark where the fascia will go. Use your set square to help mark a straight line to show its positioning. Next, use a chalk line to extend the line you made across the width of the steps. Measure from the far end of the deck to the chalk line and cut a deck board to length. Put the cut deck board into position in line with the chalk. We're going to be attaching fascia boards to the decking, so need to allow for an overhang. When securing deck boards, it's a good idea to pre-drill all fixing points with a 2mm bit to prevent boards from splitting and if you countersink all drilled fixing points, you'll get a smoother finish. Because this board is overhanging, screw through the third groove of the outside edge to ensure it's comfortably secured to the joist. Fix with a 64mm decking screw. When fixing the rest of the boards, always use the second groove in from either side. To ensure the boards are straight, secure with a single 64mm screw in one end and then move to the opposite end and then back again. Make sure to keep spaces even between adjacent boards. Because timber expands and contracts with the changing weather, you should include a gap between 5 and 8mm. Create a suitably sized spacer from an offcut of timber and use it to check the gap between boards is equal all the way along. Once the boards are all laid, measure the gap between the steps and cut sections of joist to length. These will act as additional support for your steps and can be staggered into position and secured like the previous noggins in the frame. If your top step is like ours, then it won't need a noggin as the overhang of the frame adds the necessary support. When securing the boards to the steps, always secure the front faces of the steps first. Measure the width of the step from the outer edge and cut a piece of deck board to length, making sure you allow for enough overhang on each end so that the board is flush with the fascia. Then, hold the board flush with the top of the step and pre-drill your holes before securing with 64mm deck screws into the second groove on each side. Now it's time to secure the first part of the top board. To do this, place the board flush with the board beneath and secure by drilling one screw into the second groove and one directly down and into the section of board below. Depending on the steps you're building, you may have gaps that need filling, as we do. Start by measuring the gaps and marking the required size onto deck boards, remembering to subtract 10mm to allow for the 5mm expansion on either side. Secure your board and use your chalk line to create a clear line. Then carefully cut along the line using a jigsaw. Once the sections are cut, put them into position and secure with deck screws into the centre of the board and the first groove, making sure the screws sit centrally into the frame of the step below. Then repeat this for all the gaps. Your steps are now complete and it's time to add the fascia boards. Measure and cut the length of board you need. Then mark pilot holes into the second grooves at 50mm from each end. Repeat this at 600mm intervals down the length of the fascia. Finally, attach with 64mm decking screws and repeat this for all complete boards. If, like us, you need to add an angled board because your garden is sloping, then start by attaching
matching packers to the main joist frame. This will give you something to secure the fascia onto. Then, take an offcut of deck board and slide it underneath the top fascia until it nearly makes contact with the ground. Mark a line onto the top fascia to show its position. Then, mark on the wood where the far end of your angled board will be and measure along to your line on the top fascia. Next, measure the distance between the end of the angled board and the ground. When doing this, remove 5mm as you don't want the board to be touching the ground at any point. On your deck board, mark where the full board will end, where the angle will begin and where the angle will end. Connect the marks where the angle will begin and end with a chalk line. Then, cut down this mark with a circular saw. Secure the board to the packers using 64mm deck screws and repeat this process for all other angled boards. Add gravel for an attractive finish and to aid drainage around your decking. Finally, if you want to add railings to your raised deck, then you can follow our step-by-step -step How to Assemble Deck Railings video. Your deck is now complete, so sit back, relax and admire your handiwork from your brand new decking. Here is the list of tools you'll need to build your raised deck. And here are the materials you'll use. And this is the recommended safety equipment needed.